Welcome back to the Duke series, where you'll learn how to create and execute your first SQL queries with Duke. You're going to select some data from the database you created in the last episode, so let's give it a go. Back in the project, go to your app class or to your Duke class, any class with an empty void main method will do. And there's a couple of ways to get started with Duke, but in any case, what you want to do is you want to create a class which is called DSL context. There's a couple of different ways to do that. And one of them is just opening up a good old database connection, JDBC database connection. So here you'll put in the uh, URL to a database, make sure it's the right one in my home directory in a file called mydb. And then also don't forget to put a password here if you specify one, because I specified admin admin, right? That should give you a database connection. Then you might surround the whole thing with a try with resources block, add a catch clause. Let's make that a bit bigger so you can see, right? And then you can call a Duke specific class, DSL using connection. Just put the connection inside here, right? And then you have a context, which by convention you call create with Duke. And that context lets you create SQL statements, inserts, updates, and whatever you want to do. Now, the first thing I want you to do is create and execute a SQL, a select statement, what you would call in Hibernate and JPA a native query, just a random string. And you learn along the way that Duke is a small wrapper around plain JDBC about result sets and whatnot, and it's a bit more comfortable. So you call create, fetch, inside here, select ID, comma, email from users. That's a database you created in the past, in the previous episode. You get records back. A record is basically a row. So you have your columns, you have your column values and whatnot. And then what you can do is, well, you can actually iterate through the records. And here, just similarly to result sets, but just a bit more convenient, what you could do is saying, get me the ID column and the email column. And now think back to, we generated some code also in the last episode, where you basically create classes for the tables and columns. So you can reference these tables and columns like so. So you say users, users dot email. That's a reference to your email column. And you get a typed email back, it's a string. If you copy that line here, now instead of email, you want to get the ID back. Again, you get your ID typed. And it's a bit stupid because users.users users is a reference to your users table. And to make it nicer to read, you can add a static import. So now you would basically write it like this. Record get users.email users.id. Right. And then you can simply print it out to the console. So you might want to have something like ID plus email. Just like that. Now let's run our program, see if it works. Right, boots up. And as you can see, thank you for using Duke. Well, it's a pleasure. And you see my two emails that I, or my two users rather, I inserted into the database in the last episode. Great. Just a quick note, you don't even have to print it out like so because Duke comes with a nice representation of the records. So you can just print out the whole record and now we'll see what happens in the console. You will actually get, actually, let me just remove that. And you'll see that they simulated a real table or a real table results. You see record here, ID email 52 Marco, Marco Bila, ID email someone else. So that looks nice on the console as well. Now, writing plain native query statements is not the greatest thing to do. So far, we only used the column references when getting stuff from the database. But of course, you can also do that when selecting. So instead of saying fetch, you simply select something. Now in here, you don't put anything if you want to select every column. Or similarly to later on, 
you just put user's email and user's ID in here. Right, that didn't work properly, so I'll just change it, user's email, like so. And then it's pretty much normal uh, SQL. So you just say, well, select me these two columns from a table. So from my users.users table, right? Just like so. You could also put where clauses in here. You can play with that as an exercise. But for now, we simply want to get the whole thing going. So what you basically do is select everything, fetch, and that's it. Select these two columns from users fetch. Now the type changes from a record to a record two, string integer, email and ID. And if you look at, actually, let me just quickly show you that. If you look at record two and go inside the library, you'll see you have a couple of records, record one, two, three, till 22. So up till 22 columns, basically. Now let's go back to the Duke class, right? Let's look at everything. So you have that and that should still work. Now, let me just put the user ID back in here, right? And uh, like so, email plus ID, right? Run it. And that works as well. So you get your email and ID now in reverse order back printed out to the console. But the main takeaway here is you have a nice little helper API just modeled around SQL. So create.select.from.join. Dot everything you want where it's just plain SQL. It's a very nice API on top of SQL, on top of JDBC actually, that models SQL perfectly. You call fetch, you get records, and you can do with them whatever you want. All right, these were two of the simpler methods of how to create and execute select statements with Juke. You learn more advanced ways in future episodes. But before we come to that, let's have a look at executing and writing update insert and delete statements in the next episode. Let's get right after it.